Uh, my name is Josh Merfeld. I am an assistant professor here at the KDI School of Public Policy and Management. But more importantly than that, I am the proud father of a smart, curious, three and a half year old little girl. And that's part of what drove my choice of topic today. Uh, gender gaps in employment. And specifically, how the pandemic has possibly erased a little bit of uh, progress we've made along this uh, topic in the last couple of decades, all right? So, I'm from the United States, I'm American. Uh, this data right here is from the United States, last four or five decades. And what this shows you, if you looked on the left column, it has percentages. What those percentages are is the average pay for a woman who works relative to a man. So, 60% means that the average pay for a woman is 60% of what the average pay for a man is, of everyone who works. And you see back in the 60s and 70s, it was down near 60. There are huge gaps, right? But you also see in the last few decades a pretty good upward trend, right? We're getting better. Equality is a little closer than it was a few decades ago, right? So I have hope that in the future, my daughter will be able to make exactly what anyone else it makes, regardless of gender, right? It's not just from the United States. This is from India, right? So kind of the other end of the development spectrum, maybe not the other end, but a bit on the other side. We see the same thing, right? In India, this comes from a paper I'm working on, we see large gaps in hourly wages for men relative to women. If you actually do this in terms of percentages, like on the last graph, it's almost 60%, the gap, right? It's huge. You can do this for any country, right? Sorry? Do this for any country, right? Even the most equal is not perfectly equal. There are gaps, right? Like I said, I'm American. The United States is quite below average over here on this side higher gaps than the OECD average. My wife is Korean, we live in Korea. My daughter is half American, half Korean. Korea also not doing so well. So one thing I always worry about is when my daughter's older, is she going to feel discriminated against when she wants to get a job, right? No matter what she chooses, no matter where she lives, there's always this worry I have. Now, the exact reasons for these gaps are many. It's a complicated issue. I'm not going to talk about all of them. I just want to talk about one thing. All right? And that's having children. No matter how much I want to help my wife with childcare, I can never give birth, right? Never. So if we look at what happens to the gaps, before women have a child and after they have a child, what do you think it would look like? That's exactly what this is. This is from Denmark. Denmark is one of the more equal countries. So that red line right there, right in the middle of the graph, is the exact time when the first child is born for a man or for a woman, right? The exact time right there. If you look to the left of that line, what do you notice about earnings for these two lines. They're almost the same. Before the first child is born, at least in Denmark, there is no earnings gap between men and women. None. And then that red line, boom. What happens? Earnings for women fall off a cliff. Now, if this were purely biological, you might expect it to go back up and get close to men, at least in the next couple of years. But that doesn't happen. So this has up to 10 years after giving birth. So after the first child, 10 years, right? And they might have another child, but even if they don't, it still stays like this. A pretty substantial gap, right? 
So like, there's all sorts of things that drive this. Let me just give you an example from my own everyday life of what I've noticed trying to take my daughter out by myself. So when she was younger and we had to, she wore a diaper and we had to change it, right? If I took her out by myself, this was actually in the United States. Sometimes when you need to change them, you're looking for one of those baby changing stations. I'm sure you all know what I, what I mean, even if you've never actually used one. You've seen them. It's usually on a wall, you pull it down, put a baby on it. I cannot tell you the number of times in the US before I moved here that there was a baby changing station, but guess what restroom it was in? The women's. It wasn't in the men's restroom. What am I supposed to do? I can't go in the women's restroom. Well, <laughs> I shouldn't go in the women's restroom, right? I'm not going to change her on the floor. I don't have a lot of options. Another example, here in Korea, if you've ever been on a highway, maybe you've stopped at a rest stop, right? They have a convenience store, a cafe, some restaurants. They're a bit more lively before COVID. But they also have bathrooms, probably the number one, people think, number one thing people use when they go to the rest stop. And some of them have kid toilets. I don't know if you've ever seen them. There's these little, little tiny toilets for a kid. Guess which restroom they're in? Sometimes they're only in the women's restroom. So if I am with my daughter alone, I have to take her in the men's restroom and plop her on a big toilet. So everywhere I look, it seems like there's all these signs, not just here in the United States too, telling me I shouldn't be the one out with my daughter. It should be someone else, right? Now, the pandemic. Remember when, at the very beginning, I told you, at least in the U.S., the last 20 or 30 years, we've seen really big improvements in these gaps? The pandemic might have changed things. You can see that, I, I don't think I need to point out to you where the pandemic happened here. This is employment. You can see exactly where it happened, right? 2019 to 2020. Right at the beginning of 2020, boom, right off a cliff. Two things I want to show you. First, the blue line is for women. The red is for men. Before the pandemic, they're pretty even. They're generally tracking each other pretty well. During the pandemic, the drop for women was more than 35% higher than for men. They rebounded a little bit, employment did, but they rebounded at the same amount which means, since the drop for women was larger, that they're now behind where they were before the pandemic started, right? Now, why? I'm not going to sit here and tell you I know the exact reason, but I do have one thing that I keep thinking about whenever I see these statistics. And it's something you've all seen on the news. We're seeing it talked about here in Korea as cases are spiking is that in the last year, this thing that's never really happened in any of our lifetimes, is that schools have gone fully remote. So kids were learning at home, right? They were learning at home. Now, if your kid is 15 years old, no big deal. A 15-year-old can be at home alone. But if your kid is seven or eight, and they can't go to school, somebody has to stay home with them. And often, who do you think that is? It's often the mother, right? There's kind of this, I think, societal idea that oftentimes the mother should be the one at home, right? And so the fact that school, especially for young kids, doubles as childcare means if you close schools, I'm not even talking about the education issues of whether you learn well online or not. I don't even mean that. I just mean somebody's got to be there with the little kids. And it's often the mothers. You see this in surveys about housework, chores, that women all over the world have said they're doing a lot more of certain chores during the pandemic, which when you think about the fact that we're all stuck at home, does make sense. And to be fair, men are also doing more chores, right? So this isn't a woman-specific phenomenon. But still, it gets you thinking about this, right? Now, the last graph I want to show you is I want you to focus on that dark blue bar, okay? That dark blue bar is the change in employment for women with children, okay? The far left is spring of 2020, 
the far right is fall of 2020. So you look at those two blue bars, they're about the same. So for women with children, employment is down about the same spring and fall. It didn't really get better. Now, if you go and you look at any of the other ones for men, the red bars, you'll notice they're getting better. So from spring to fall, employment for men seems to have picked up a bit. But for women, especially women with children, but also women without children, it didn't. So they're at a worse place than they were before the pandemic started with respect to employment, right? And this is something I think about all the time. <laughs> I think that's a little nerdy, but it's true. I do. And so this leads me to just three small points that I want to make. The first is that I feel like too often, this is governments, but I think this is people more generally, we don't recognize the disparate impacts that policies can have, even though the policies seem neutral, right? Closing a school doesn't seem like a gendered policy in any way. But when you think about what it means to close a school and have kids at home, all of a sudden, you can start to think about how this policy decision affects men and women differently, right? And it doesn't have to be gender, even though that's my focus here. It could be race. It could be immigration status. It could be all sorts of things, right? And so what that means is that we might actually need to think about gender-specific policy in order to combat these seemingly neutral policy choices. And the last one, as we actually think about remaking our world and doing something different, is how we might change things like employment policies. More flexibility, this says flexibility for working mothers, but it really should say fathers as well, right? Because if the woman's not taking care of the child, the father needs to, or you need to find daycare or something like that, right? So things like flexible work, we might see become the norm and might actually help make sure that we don't backslide to where we were a couple decades ago. So I will stop there. Thank you very much.